The following is a presentation of Muddy River News. There's a reason Harvey's Furniture has been around for over 75 years. Exceptional quality furniture, affordable prices, superior customer service. The only way to stay in business for over 75 years is to do things right. Harvey's Furniture, our home, your home. Hey everybody, welcome to the Daily Muddy. I'm Ashley Conrad and joining me today is Chris Ketters. And Chris, you are just like a man about town, right? <laughs> I don't know about saying okay, that. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, today we're here to talk about something uh, specifically kind of in your professional realm and then also in your professional, but also fun kind of, uh, I don't wanna say downtime, but just like your social hour, your, when, I'm not working. when you're not working, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you are the host co-host and creator of Wild Quincy, yeah, right? Yeah. Which is a really cool podcast. Yeah, we just uh, literally just had Bob Goff on just a few weeks ago. And so. it was, in fact, the highest rating podcast, right? Yeah, yeah. You that, say that? that sounds good. It yeah. makes him feel good. Yeah. yeah. We'll say that. <laughs> uh, and then also, <laughs> he may or may not have just flipped us the bird. Um, also, the Lost Boys of Hannibal, which I have never heard of that. Yeah, it's about the uh, 1967 uh, three boys that went missing in 1967. They thought wow. they might have been lost in caves and they've never been found. So, wow. Yeah, that happened in Hannibal. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to listen to that. I'm going to have to check that out for sure. But today we're talking about something um, that is really, really important. And maybe a lot of people don't know about it. So hopefully we'll bring some uh, awareness and maybe some information about is basically um, truck driving training, right? Right. Okay. And John Wood has uh, an open house coming up. Yeah, we, we actually have uh, quite a few throughout the year because we want to give uh, potential students the idea of what exactly goes on with truck driver training. Um, so we, we bring them in and have them talk about, we talk about the different uh, things that you're going to experience and what the regulations are and what to expect and making sure that, you know, that you uh, haven't been under the influence of any drugs right. and things like that. Very important. Even though it's legal, it's not legal when you're driving sure. a truck still. So right, right. Yeah, we go over all those things in the open house. Excellent. So what has changed in the environment of truck driving or what would be like something that maybe would draw someone in who really hasn't really thought about doing truck driver training yet? You know, I take myself, for example, uh, I was a chamber of commerce executive director before I got into truck driving. Okay. And it was one of those where I was just like, you know, I enjoyed what I was doing, but I wanted to do something different. And that's what we see a lot of our students is a second career student. So uh, they are, you know, they've been in that nine to five working behind a desk for many years and they're like, you know what, it's time for a change. And yeah. so we see a lot of our students that are coming in that, uh, you know, they're in their 40s or 50s and just want to try something new. Just and ready for different. a change. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I would say, you know, a good third to a half of our students are just because of that. Really? Yeah. So, so it's not, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about, uh, you know, over the road truck driving, but is it all, I mean, you see people, you see trucks that are parked on off ramps that are probably sleeping. Yeah. I mean, is it all like that? What is no. it? Okay. No, I mean, it's such a wide variety. And that's the really neat thing about what we do with our students is that we bring recruiters in and they explain about what they are going to expect when they're with that company. And the great thing about it is that if you want to be home every night, you can be home every night. Really? Or if you want to be on the road for three weeks and see the country, you can do that as well. So there's so many different options out there of, of pathways. And I think that's a mis conception kind of like what you were thinking yeah. about well you're stuck on the road sleeping at night and all right. that stuff but no there's so many options you know we have uh, companies like Bly and, and these different uh, class B trucks that are running around the city and are dump trucks garbage trucks things like that those are all you know CDL jobs that you can do right here at home and be home at night awesome yeah again I didn't know yeah. that so that's one thing I'm sure you're going to cover in the in yeah. the open house right and then um, like the certification for getting uh, this this specific type of license I mean it depends on the type of truck you're driving right true okay you, the class A's are the ones that are what we call a combination vehicle so they actually are pretty much attaching a tractor to a trailer okay and then the class B is what we were talking about earlier with dump trucks and in uh, garbage trucks and cement trucks and those would be considered class B okay so uh, you have those and then also we have a hazmat class as well that we offer so if you want an endorsement for your hazmat so you can carry hazardous materials you have to go through a class now to do that okay so, uh, so we cover those and with our class we do both range and road so it doesn't matter if you're class a or class b we're going to go over all the details of that and then we're going to actually teach you how to uh, go to the dmv and take the test and so okay. the really neat thing about what we do compared to what used to be like Example, my brother, he got a CDL and he just went and did it. You know, he didn't go through a class. He failed it a couple times, 
sorry. sorry Bummer. Ted. He totally called I, you I, out. I, I did not say that. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, so what happens is, is if when you come to the class, our success rate for first time going to the DMV is extremely high. Really? So uh, you have a much better success uh, chance now of going and, and passing on the first time. So do you like rent a truck to go do your license? Yeah. To, what do you do? We literally have all of the tractors and trailers at John Wood. So we have about 12 trucks that we use. Okay. And uh, we'll actually use our trucks to take it to take you to the DMV to get the testing done. So uh, oh. you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, we get you prepared so you know exactly what to expect when you go in there. Very cool. Yeah. I'd still be nervous. but nah, Well, I was too. Yeah. I, I tell I made the made the comment of uh, uh, interview I was in recently. I said the two most nervous times I've ever had was getting my CDL and applying for a job where I was an instructor for CDLs. <laughs> so those are my two most I can only times. imagine. Yeah. And, and that is what you are. I think I failed to mention that, but you are the instructor of transportation services, services at John Wood. Uh, and John Wood's one of my favorite. This one, I went there. Uh, undergrad is one of my favorite yeah, places. I'll but um, so anything aside from, I know you mentioned like the hazmat, I'm sure there have been different, um, you know, standards or, you know, levels of things that have changed. Anything big in the, in recent years that yeah, actually, one of the big things going back to what I was just talking about, my brother, when he went to go take the test, he could just go in and do it himself. Back last year, they, they made changes that made it required for you to actually go to a school to get qualified to go and take gotcha. a test. Okay. So it's, it's created a situation where um, it's good obviously for the safety perspective, but it becomes a little bit of a hassle for uh, students who say you're a farm a farm kid and, and your dad wants you to, you know, haul the grain to, to the elevator yeah, and have now you have to go to a school mm -hmm. to, to do that. Well, we've made it to we kind of accommodate that now. So our, our classes are six weeks long, but if you are uh, able to and you want to progress more quickly and you want to get out sooner because you need to get back to the farm right. then you can actually be progressive and get out quicker than the six weeks if you if you needed to really? so yeah if you're ready to test in week four we'll take you to the dmv and test so we oh, want to accommodate awesome. those because we don't want you know we don't want to be a strain for you know the farmers or different companies that need those employees right away right so so that's why we we offer that as an option at John awesome Wood. well and also i before this interview i did a little bit of googling and realized that and it's a stagger number so 70 percent of american goods are transported oh, yeah. by truck drivers yeah. right yeah that's insane so I, you don't want to you don't want to hold that up either and yeah. i know that the call for truck drivers whether it's a b whatever it is mm -hmm. the the class they are in dire need for people to step up, right? It really hasn't changed. Yeah. Uh, in the last 20 years, it's been that way where there's always been a demand. I, I make this comment, we do some presentations to uh, some some students and like sophomores and stuff in high school. And, and we always bring up the question of, tell me something in this room that you thought was brought by a truck. And they'll be like, oh, the computer or the desk. And I'm like, Literally everything yeah. that is in this building everything. was brought to you by yeah. the truck. So, and, this, and probably the, the building materials. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So the demand, and, and, and it's really interesting you really think about it. You think of 50 years ago, uh, you know, you used to go to the to the farmer's market to get your stuff. And that's kind of changed now. If we want oranges from Florida, we get oranges from Florida right, right. away. But that all has to come somehow. So yeah. that's how we do it. Right. And I think probably, I mean, again, there's probably a lot of misconceptions, probably a lot of opportunity for, um, I guess, learning. And and that's what the open house is aimed aimed at doing, right? Yeah. So it, it just gives you an option if you if you've thought about doing it, or maybe um, your company says, "Hey, it would really be nice for you to get that class A CDL." Then you can come into our, to our open house and and learn about what you exactly need to to expect going in, and then also um, just making sure that you know you're within the guidelines of regulations of what we need for you to be able to get that class A. Perfect. CDL. And it's free, right? Yeah. Yeah. The open house is free. Uh, you can contact us at John Wood and find out the information and. Uh, uh, We'll, we're happy to see everybody come in. Okay, and when is the open house? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. It is February 6th at 6.30, and it's uh, located at the Workforce Development Center, which is like 42nd in Cooks Lane. 42nd so in Cooks Lane. You can see okay. all the trucks, too, and our big simulator. We have a, a massive, awesome simulator um, that we put all of our students on, and it's Sweet. a big three-screen simulator, and it moves, and you, if you miss, you, you shifting doesn't work, so it's an awesome simulator. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you I can come out and try. I was going to say, yeah. I, I, I'm not to like give any misconception or lead anybody on that I want to be a truck driver. Although <laughs> I feel like it would be cool because I didn't think about, I mean, of course you think about the job of it, but you don't yeah. think about the 
benefits of you know seeing yeah. different places yeah. i mean yeah when i was when i was driving i made trips to arizona new mexico uh, all these places and these places i've never been i like yeah I, I i'm in love with interstate 40 if you like interstate 40 yeah. is an amazing interstate compared to what you have around here it's right. just so neat to see those things that you don't get to see in regular life yeah so one thing i didn't think about of and i um, think about it, and i'm sure other people didn't so the open house will kind of broaden your horizons when it comes to yeah. cdl and what what's available and very cool. So open house, February 6th, 6.30 p.m., um, 42nd in Cooks Lane. It's a workforce development center. Is yep, that what you that's said? That's correct. Awesome. Well, hopefully you get a big crowd uh, and maybe I'll see you out there. And to maybe you come out too. <laughs> maybe yeah. I will. Maybe I will. Well, thanks, Chris, for being here. I really <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah. Coming up, we'll be talking about mental health for college students. Welcome to the Abbey, a Quincy tradition. With six big screens, a new larger kitchen, and now more seating capacity, the Abbey is the place to be before, during, and after the big game. Come enjoy fan favorite appetizers, steaks, burgers, and a variety of daily food and drink specials. Can't join us? Carryout is available too. Now with a convenient drive up window to better serve you. 1736 Spring in Quincy. Opens at 3 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Come join all your friends at the Abbey, a Quincy tradition. Instant Replay is your local sports bar. With 18 big screen TVs, we have all the sports packages from college games to pro games. We offer daily drink specials and come check out the bullpen, our newly renovated beer garden. Instant Replay, 2739 Chestnut in Quincy. Are you looking for the perfect venue for your next special event? Check out Utopia Event Center. Utopia has a large banquet room and an awesome bar area, perfect for anything from birthday parties to formal corporate meetings. It also offers a photo booth, stage for a DJ or a live band, and a fully stocked bar, all for only $300. Check us out at utopiaeventcenter.com or call Barn at 217-430-6559 for more information. Utopia Event Center, 900 North 12th Street in Quincy. Quincy Warehouse Bargains is your Quincy home improvement store. It's the only store of its kind in the Quincy area. We offer flooring, mattresses, area rugs, dining sets, couches, appliances, and much more. And have more products to come so we can better serve the Quincy and Tri-State community. Our staff is ready to help you find what you need to make your house a home. Quincy Warehouse Bargains, 4100 North 24th Street, Quincy. And welcome back. Joining me now is Jill Miller. And Jill, you are the um, counseling, the director of counseling and wellness at Culver Stockton College. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. I wrote down some notes, but sometimes I can't even read my own writing. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Uh huh. Uh, we're going to talk about something that is very important, and it seems to become uh, becoming more and more prevalent. Um, and I know that it's talked about a lot, but there uh, can never be enough awareness, I think, and that is um, mental health, uh, as well as suicide awareness, but not just uh, on a broad spectrum. This is basically focusing on um, college students and maybe even a little bit younger, is that right? Yeah, um, so I see um, freshmen to seniors at Culver Stockton College. Um, yeah, they're about ages 18 to 25. Okay. So when I hear 18, I just don't think college, I don't know why, just because it just seems so young. But yeah. so one of the things that you're involved in, and I love this idea, um, it's called the Bandana Project. And the Bandana Project, not only does it look really cool, like it's for a great cause. It basically brings awareness to uh, mental health, uh, mental health issues and suicide amongst uh, this age group, right? Yeah. So that you're directly working with every day, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's a super cool thing. Um, it's a nationwide mental health awareness and suicide prevention movement. Um, we didn't start it. We're just becoming a campus who is doing this. Okay. So um, basically the students wear green bandanas and they tie them around their book bags, symbolizing that they're a mental health advocate for their peers and that they are someone, a safe person who can go, someone could go to to get mental health resources. Okay. Um, and so they carry around cards um, in their book bags and give them to these students who are struggling. Um, and those cards provide mental health resources that Culver Stockton offers and also partners with, with the awesome. community. Excellent. So it basically just says, hey, 
come chat with me if you're having a problem. And I think that's what a lot of people, especially that age need, um, because I know that, you know, not just with societal pressures, but school pressures, of course, um, you know, it, it, there just seems to be more and more pressure, more and more weight put on these kids' shoulders every single day. And I was just talking to David Adam, my kiddo's 12, and she already seems to carry the weight of the world on her shoulder. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest concerns I have is making sure that she knows uh, that she can not only talk to me, but that she has other people, if she doesn't want to talk to me, that she has other people to talk to. And that's basically what this says, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, your peers are the ones that people want to talk to. Yeah. They, you know, they feel more comfortable. They're the same age. Um, and just knowing that someone else isn't going to judge you um, for needing mental health help is a huge thing. Right, right. And we all go through it. I mean, we all have, um, we all feel that pressure. We all feel uh, there's just so much. There's, you know, between social media, uh, just a fast paced world, I think, maybe. Um, who knows what kind of environmental factors, you know, who knows what is causing this uptick, uh, but we know that it's there and we know that it's very important to be able to address it and make sure people are aware that it's okay. They're not alone. We all deal with crap from time to time. Um, and what's important is not, not to make permanent decisions based on temporary issues, right? Temporary problems, even though they feel like they're just life changing and things are never gonna be the same. There is someone out there, I bet, who has dealt with the same thing, right? Yeah. And that's kind of what this aims to do. And I love, I had never heard of it before. Um, so even though you're not the creator or the, you know, the brainchild behind it, I love that you're getting involved. And I would love to see other universities um, and even um, junior colleges get involved because the yeah. same stress is everywhere, right? Yeah, and um, so last year, before I came to Culver, um, they had a mental health task force to decide um, you know, what needs to happen on campus because something needs to change. You know, there's just an increase of students saying they're having mental health issues. And so they had a mental health task force comprised of, you know, students and faculty and staff to decide, okay, what do we need to do? And this is one of the projects that they were like, okay, we need to do this. We need to implement this. And so that was my task too. Awesome. This year. Well, I'm proud of you for doing it. Um, so if you're an individual and you want to get involved, um, okay, so what, is there a criteria that you have to meet to get involved to be kind of an advocate um, or get involved as an individual with the Bandana Project? Yeah, so um, first off, Culver Stockton students or staff can come to me. Um, they have to watch the welcome video so that they understand exactly what they're, um, you know, signing up for. Uh -huh. um, this doesn't mean you're a mental health professional. Again, it's just someone that you come to and um, someone who's willing to have a talk about mental health. Sure. So just come to me, um, the students and staff, and they can um, sign up and get their bandanas and their cards. And um, yeah, it's super easy. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, is can organizations get involved in this as well? Do you, is there something, I mean, I know as far as Culver Stockton, you're probably like, well, I don't really know how to, but do you know as far as like the Mandana Project as a whole, is it something that organizations help drive as well? Um, so there's a new group on campus called the Self um, Kindness Crew, and they're actually mental health advocates as well. And okay. so they are semi partnering just to try to help get the word out to to help you know and then gotcha. the psychology club is also helping get the okay. word out and spread the um spread the awareness too awesome mm -hmm. well excellent so uh the bandana project is again aimed at uh bringing awareness um and also providing advocacy for uh anyone experiencing mental health uh issues or um you know just glitches we'll say because sometimes it's not you know sometimes it's not a huge issue it's just i'm struggling for a minute i don't know if this is a phase maybe i'm hormonal maybe you know but just somebody to talk to when you feel like things are getting a little too heavy for you uh and i love it i think it's i think it's an amazing cause um and again i really hope other colleges and universities get on board with it do you know how many universities or colleges are involved in it um not off the top of my head the um the bandanaproject.org has the, has all this has all the campuses cool. so um, if you don't know you're a campus you could be um, right you know all the campuses are listed on their website. and what was it again um the bandana 
Well, it's P R O G dot org. Okay. The bandana P R O G dot org. Dot org. Okay. And so if you just Google the bandana project, you'll find yeah. it. Yeah. And there's a lot of really cool information, a lot of um, statistics that I had no clue. I mean, just it's crazy. You know, 15 to 24 year olds are amongst the highest uh, age group to be affected by um, suicide and mental health um, issues. And to me, that's it's it's understandable when you hear it. But it's so uh, mind boggling that that we don't have more programs aimed at helping at least let these kids know that, hey, you're not alone and um, I'm here to talk to you. And I, yeah, I think it's just it's yeah, so such important. It's a scary age, you know, um, it's a big turning point in life. Yes. So what's next? Um, you know, I'm an adult now. Um, you know, big responsibilities come with that. And right. so it's like, what do I do now? Right. You know, is, is it college? Is it um, you know, the workforce, is it something else, Yeah. you know? And so it's just, shoot, even after knows. college, you're like, what in the world am I yeah. going to do? Yeah. Been there, done that. But again, it's, you know, it's just, it's awesome to have someone to talk to, uh, because I, I can guarantee that, you know, you're not alone in, in these struggles and in these thoughts. So thank you for, uh, being a part of this and for creating this for Culver Stockton. I think it's awesome. And again, I hope more, uh, more organizations get involved. Uh, the bandana project, it is, basically advocacy and awareness for uh, mental health um, and suicide amongst college students. So uh, if you're interested in seeing if your university does that, go to the bandana org and uh, see if see if they do. And if not, maybe you can start it there. It's just, a, you know, it's a it's a green bandana on a backpack. Not only does it look cool, but it is one of the coolest programs that I think I've heard of in a long time. And so it's a super easy way to spread awareness. Yeah, very cool. Well, I really appreciate you coming in and good luck with it. And uh, if you have any updates or anything, we'd love to have you back on. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank appreciate you. it. Well, that's all for today's Daily Muddy. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Muddy River News. Our home. Our news.